Over here, we got this engine from Ashworth Parker with a big DC dynamo on it. With interpose, it's shunt wound. We created a field rheostat. Thank you for Devin for banging that together. We got six lamps in load in series parallel. And then these bulbs comprise a field rheostat. What I did was I, they're all in parallel and they form sort of an electric gate. The more bulbs you screw in, the less resistance there is. Right now, they're all in with different wattages to calibrate the machine. So we're gonna start it going. Another British thing that I love a lot is these cylinder cocks, they double as PRVs, or really the other way around, because when these are off, the cams are off, they're pressure relief valves in case the engine ingests a water slug, it just vents right out where the cylinder cock drain would go. Now they're PRVs only. When you put these cams up, they're cylinder drains. Pretty brilliant. So, we're gonna get it going. Magnets really eight if you count the small interpoles between them. Four brush assemblies. Each electromagnet north, south, north, south, positive, negative, positive, negative, two in parallel, negative, two in parallel, positive. The field wire comes out the other end. Two bars going to load. You tap the field off one through the field rheostat, through the field, then back to negative and the generator is self-excited. We can change the power level if we unscrew enough lamps. The field strength will go down. See the resistance? Less hard. You see, we just actually extinguished it, so we'll flash the field back on. Ash 
Robert Parker. I'm very sorry we're not exhausting into a condenser right now, and I'm also sorry we don't have a proper switchboard the way I like to have, but we're making juice the proper way. We'll slow it down now. Just get it drained. When you're running one of these things, very, very important, this is one of the most important things. Besides the cylinder oil feed, there's an internal pump driven by the engine crankshaft. Everything that isn't the cylinder, the crosshead, the eccentric governor, the main uh, small end, big end, is taken care of by an oil pump. There's the strainer for it. You need to make sure that is clean. You need to make sure you have oil pressure when the engine is turning. If it is not, you must immediately shut the engine down because you'll destroy it. This is a little bit more involved than your average redneck engine show sawmill type thing. Now, you can see, this is an example, we didn't film it, but when we had this running, this glass was up here. As soon as we shut it down, because the action of the boiling uh, decreased in intensity, the circulation decreased in speed, this level dropped right down when we shut that throttle. That's called shrink. The other way around, when you open it up and demand is swell. So you have to prepare, if you're gonna run a high load like this, you know, my friend Scott Carlisle, he helped put together this big alternator coreless engine. And he really, really wanted to generate electricity. They put a decent foundation under it. But stupid firemen, this is a big problem at these steam shows. These guys are terrified of boilers. You know, they say, oh, low water is the most evil thing ever. So, of course, what's their answer to low water is to run the water not there, but somewhere up here. So, of course, you know, and of course, he can't fire where the dam. So not only is he in the dome with the water, but he's down to about 40 PSI. And he refused to work with Scott. So when they got the, that throttle open on the alternator, coil was supposed to water went like this, down the line to the engine. Things started to shake. It was awful. And they refused to work with him. So he, uh, he did not attempt to run it at high speed again. So I should go down there to Canandaigua, up there rather, and be his fireman. We'll get him up right under the safety and have the water down there. And when he opens that regulator for the coreless and gets it on the governor, it'll climb like this. So, anyway, um, we're going to try another engine now. It would be nice to get this anchor windlass going. This is a nice thing to look at.